Today's lesson is all about spacecraft subsystems, and I'm just going to give you a general overview as to what those subsystems are. So we have three objectives. The first is to understand the difference between the payload and the bus. The next is to know what the main subsystems are and what function they're going to perform in general. And lastly, we're going to kind of introduce this concept of margin and talk about what that actually means when we're talking about um, expected performance. So to begin with, um, what is our spacecraft? And you can think of our spacecraft as really kind of a collection of different subsystems. And in general, we have two categories. We either have the payload or the bus. Most of the subsystems are going to be a part of the bus. It's basically just the payload that's part of the payload. And probably the best way to kind of think about this is to think about an actual school bus. So a school bus is going to have different components. It's going to have, you know, a body, a frame. It's going to have a horn, radio, and a driver. It's going to have steering, batteries, radiators, engines, all of those things. All of those pieces and parts are going to be part of what the bus is. But that's not really why the bus exists. The bus really exists not just for its own benefit, but to really carry these, these passengers to where they want to go. And so these passengers are going to be representative of, um, in our spacecraft, of really kind of the payload. So it's really what is the purpose of my spacecraft? So for your design project, the purpose of your spacecraft might be to take pictures uh, from space. And so the payload is going to be the camera or the sensor that enables that actual, um, you know, purpose to actually come to fruition. We also have a lot of different acronyms with this lesson, so I've kind of put these here explicitly so you can have these. Um, this lesson, we're not going to necessarily talk about all of the pieces and parts that make up each of these subsystems. We're just going to kind of introduce what these concepts are so that you can have something as a placeholder as we go through the rest of this block. So the first one is the CDHS, or the Common Data Handling Subsystem. That'd be akin to the horn, the radio, and the driver for, for our bus example. Uh, the next would be their ADCS, or Attitude Determination and Control Subsystem, uh, which is kind of like the steering for our bus. Um, for our spacecraft, it's going to actually steer us as well, kind of point us in a particular direction. The EPS, or electrical power subsystem, is really kind of like the battery um, and the alternator for our, for our uh, bus here. And for our spacecraft, it's going to be really our solar panels. Um, and then lastly, it's the TCS, or thermal control subsystem, which is really how the spacecraft modulates its own temperature and keeps um, different surfaces at the temperatures that it wants. So that's kind of an overview of what this example would look like. Let's talk about a spacecraft now as we kind of move forward with this example. So the spacecraft that I've kind of chose to show you guys here is that of SIBRS, which is an operational satellite we have up in GEO. And basically what it's looking uh, for on the surface of the Earth are hot signals. So it's really looking for um, any kind of uh, ICBM launch or anything that might be very uh, a very hot signal and it can actually detect those things. So its primary payload is going to be essentially the sensors and camera almost of how it's actually detecting what that ICBM launch might be. So it's the sensor that's going to perform the mission. That's the payload for SIBRS. What is SIBRS comm system? So this is just kind of another example. It's got a couple antennas that are pointed down towards the surface of the Earth. Notably, it's not just comm, it's data handling as well. So there's pictures that are generated or images that are gener generated from the, uh, from, the, from the camera, from the sensors itself. And, and so it's actually processing that data as well. And that's a part of the CDHS subsystem. Next, as a general overview, um, it's going to have, SIBRS has some way to control itself, uh, to control its pointing, so which direction it's actually looking in orbit. And it uses the attitude determination control subsystem. The name says, it's all, says it all. Attitude, spacecraft attitude, is how it's pointing. Determination is how it determines where it's pointing. And then control is how it actually points to not just where it is, but where it wants to go. So it determines where it's at, and then it somehow controls itself to actually point in the direction it wants. We're going to talk about more of how it does that in future lessons. Uh, the next is the EPS. So that's um, a solar arrays and batteries for the system. Most of the satellites that we're going to be talking about um, have solar arrays because they're um, orbiting the Earth. And so we've got a lot of um, plentiful solar power out there. And so it's going to use solar arrays to generate that power. And then it has to store that power somehow um, when, when the spacecraft goes into the Earth's shadow or into the eclipse. And so it uses a battery to do that. Next is our TCS, a thermal control subsystem. Um, basically, it's going to have some sort of radiators to radiate out excess heat. Um, it also might have other types of um, sensors and whatnot that be um, incorporated into the subsystem so that it can monitor its own temperature and keep the temperatures that it wants to do. All right, so next is our propulsion. 
propulsion subsystem is going to provide the needed delta V primarily to the attitude determination and control subsystem, so the ADCS system, such that it can actually point in the direction that it needs to go. The propulsion system is how it can, can do that. Also, um, how it can maneuver to orbit and whatnot. So lastly, the structure, the spacecraft structure is essentially all the other pieces that the spacecraft needs to hold all the subsystems together. In this case, um, there's actually a deployable light shade on Sibbers, which would be part of, this, uh, part of the actual structure subsystem. Um, so that was another piece of the puzzle there for our spacecraft. So all of those particular subsystems are part of the bus. So it's either satellites has bus components, or the payload components, most of the components are going to be part of the bus. So let's talk about margin lastly before we wrap up here. So what is margin? When we talk about margin, uh, you can think about um, just um, how much extra, or how much buffer you have left over. Um, you can think of it, you know, your mom gives you 10 bucks to go to the store to buy a, a, a thing of milk. Milk costs $3. So since milk is only $3 and you have $10, your extra left over would be $7. So you'd have like a $7 margin in that case. So in engineering speak, it's much the same way. Um, we basically talk about actual or expected performance. Um, and then we subtract off the required performance. So this would be akin to like a factor of safety um, or any kind of other um, cushion or margin that you can think of. So we can have margin in different ways. We can have margin in our power budget. We can have margin with our schedule. We can have margin in all of those um, different categories. In general, the convention that we use is a positive margin is a good thing. So uh, for our milk money example, that $7 extra that we had would be a $7 po positive margin. Um, if we were in a time of crisis and milk was now $12, if we went to the grocery store and we only had $10, um, then our margin would be negative $2 in that case. So hopefully you've learned a little bit about what the subsystems are. Um, the next few lessons are going to dive deeper into um, more specifically how we actually accomplish those goals of the set, uh, of this particular subsystems. Um, but until that time, We'll see you then.